What up, Dokkan Hunters? Welcome back to Toonrami for another video on Dragon Ball Z Dokkan Battle. So for this video, I want to talk about some news that has taken place uh, in the past few days on Dokkan. I'm sure most of you have already seen it, or heard about it, or just come across it in some form or fashion. This isn't supposed to be breaking news. This is going to be news recap, sort of, and my thoughts on some of the big changes that are going to be coming to Dokkan and just some updates. I usually don't talk about JP because I'm a global player, I'm a global defender, which is apparently a thing. I love global, I only believe in global. But JP is still important as far as the news because sometimes things that happen to JP are things that are going to happen to global sooner rather than later, especially nowadays. So let's just get right to the news. So Piccolo is getting a Dokkan Fest exclusive unit and he's going to be joining Dokkan with a Fusion Kami active skill, which is awesome according to these leaks. And that will be a step up from the EZA AGL free-to-play version where he synchronizes with Nail. So I think that, if anything, this Piccolo should be named something different, and he should have a category lead status of plus three and at least 177% across the board, just like Universe 7. There are even less units to use than Namekians. There are fewer and far in between. The amount of teams that you can create with these Namekians are woefully lacking. So it's not a game-breaking change to give this new Piccolo a key plus three and maybe a stat percent boost of 180%, 183, something like that. I, I think that would really, really help both versatility in Dokkan and as well as bringing more love back to a team that, a category that has been ignored since basically the beginning. And as for the names, obviously there aren't too many to choose from because Piccolo is his name. We've already done Demon King Piccolo, we've done Kami. But I think what would be cool is if we called him the Namek, just like in the show. So maybe to start off, the the unit that you would get in the summon would be Piccolo synchronized with Nail. He would Dokkan Awaken into Piccolo fusion with Kami. Kind of like what you see in Dragon Ball Z Budokai 3, if you ever played that, or just Budokai in general. Those games, they had some cool names. So Piccolo synchronized with Nail. Dokkan Awaken to Piccolo Fusion with Kami, and then the active skill could upgrade him to the Namek. That was such an epic moment, where Piccolo approaches Kami, puts his hand on his chest, and uh, Popo's like, Oh, Kami! No! Kami! And then they fuse, and when he goes to approach Cell, man, that, that standoff, it's one of the best moments in the Cell Saga. Because honestly, I was really rooting for Piccolo. The dude is always getting the short end of everything. Even when he finds new power, you just think that, you know, he's going to pull through, but he doesn't. So finally, he ascends past Goku and Vegeta. He stands before Cell. Cell's just like, Hey, what are you doing? Get out of my way. I need to go become complete. And Piccolo just goes, No, you're not. And then he becomes the Namek. <laughs> Huh? What are you doing? Stop that! <coughs> Speaking of Cell... Hi, it's me, Cell. And I'm getting a prime battle form. <coughs> so the other bit of news is that Cell is getting a prime battle form. He's going to be in a new LR for Dokkan. Given the trajectory of the current Prime Battle units that we've received, Int, Vegeta, AGL, Trunks, Tech, Goku, Strength, Frieza, it's pretty safe a bet to say that this Imperfect Cell is going to be a physical unit. It really squashes my hopes of a transforming cell though. So my thoughts on this. It's cool. I mean, we were due for a new Prime Battle unit at some point, but I really wish that it had been something else because Cell is one of the only units that I could think of that could be another viable transforming character. What do I mean by that? You have AGL Goku that transforms from you know Super Saiyan 1 all the way to blue. Then we got Tech Frieza, who did the same thing, base form all the way to Golden Frieza. And most recently we got a physical Vegeta that went from Super Saiyan to blue. So naturally the next transforming unit, if there were to be one, would be an extreme unit. Why not sell? Cell can transform from his imperfect form to the imperfect form plus the power of the human race when he absorbs all those humans and then channels it against uh, Piccolo and Seventeen. 
and then his next form can be 17 absorbed, 18 absorbed, aka perfect form, and finally super perfect form when he regenerates after the explosion caused by Goku. So now that's pretty much out the window, for right now at least, but who knows. Now, the other big news for Dokkan, it's the quality of life changes. So before, for the longest time, JP used to get all the good stuff way before Global. And I, I kind of liked it because it was a nice way to see what life would be like in a few months. So you could brace yourself for the imminent changes. But then lately, Dokkan did the right thing in my opinion by adding some versatility to both versions where sometimes one version gets the exclusives when the other one doesn't. And it added, it, it diminished the difference between the two in terms of quality. Sure, JP is still the superior product in terms of how well they take care of the units and the banners and all that stuff. There's just more to do and the banners are more generous. Sure. However, recently, the, the latest update to hit JP has also hit global in terms of quality of life. So right now, they are the same in terms of functionality, user interface, and all of that. With this new announcement of quality of life changes coming for JP, it makes me wonder if this is also going to be hitting global at the same time. I really hope that it does. Because the, the first major change is going to be that the movement on the maps of Dokkan is going to be much, much faster. And I think that's awesome, because it just it affects the game in so many ways. It makes World Tournament grinds less unbearable. World Tournament grinds still suck, but they're less unbearable. You can now farm faster. You can pretty much do anything faster. You can now get those record time missions a lot easier. You don't have to resort to you know, altering the internal clock on your phone or just being good enough to beat those ridiculous times on your own. Everything improves. And I think that it would behoove Dokkan to do the same thing for Global as JP right away. Because if they don't, it's gonna cause yet again another rift between the two games in terms of quality. And it could cause a decrease in income of revenue because there are a lot of people who play JP. There are a lot of people who play Global. There's also a subsection that plays both. And if they were to do this, it would it would devastate the, the players who use both. Because once they see how much faster and, quote, better it is on JP, they may not want to play on Global, which means they may not summon on Global, which means there may not be as much money coming in for Global. So I think something like this is really, really beneficial to have implemented on both versions at the same time. It's nothing aesthetic. It's purely functional, and that's very important. The other thing is that the inventory max the maximum inventory number has been increased from 999 to 9999 this is also great because now people will be able to farm longer farm more if they wanted to pay their way through they could pay more you know stock up on those metals anything that they need to stock up on they can either do it the, the free to play way or they can do it the pay to play way but they would do a lot more of it I think that's great, because if you are the type to farm supers as much as possible and avoid using Kai's, you know all too well the struggle of having to use Gregory medals over and over and over and then running out, or using Popo medals and running out, and then having to go through those metal missions and having to farm those over and over and over and over. It's, it's a horrible cycle that steers you back so far that you don't even remember what you were trying to do in the first place. Last but not least. Dokkan Punching! The Punching Bag event is getting revamped. How many of you actually beat the Punching event all the way at 77 million? Yeah, me neither. Uh, it was ridiculous. It was a fun challenge at first, for maybe like the first 20 minutes, but then afterwards you start, it starts to sink in that, you know what, I don't have the units, why bother? And I found myself feeling the same way, because it was hopeless. But fortunately, help is on the way. They are revamping the Punching event. Within a couple days, they will remove the event off of Dokkan, fix it up, and bring it back with items. So now that 77 million reward is looking a lot more reachable. You don't have to necessarily have those two teams that are the only ones that have been mathematically proven to get it. Having a Goku Frieza with a TN, with a 18, with a this and then that, or the LR Gohan with Beerus and blah 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 blah. You don't have to have that anymore, which is great because now the event becomes more accessible to players. It becomes more of a challenge, but in a fun way because there are now more variables to consider. It's not just having the right units, and it's not just having luck, but it's also 
having the items choices to then compensate for that luck. So thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed the video or found it useful at all, please leave a like and comment below. And also be sure to subscribe for more Dokkan action. I'm out of here, so thanks again, stay tuned, and always remember to Dokkan responsibly before I become complete. Ah.